Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, late to the party, our show where we watch old movies. Do they hold up? Do they not hold up? We're going to find out today. We have the movie today, Joss Whedon Serenity from 2005. The Alliance, a military force that has colonized the galaxy, is in pursuit of, in pursuit of two fugitives who are hiding in Serenity, a spaceship whose crews comprises... Rebels, and it's exactly how it's written. I don't know who wrote that. Uh, October 7, 2005, directed by Joss Whedon. Budget 39 million, box office 40.4 million, distributed by Universal, starring <coughs> the awesomely named Nathan Fillion, Summer Glau, Sean Maher, Jules Statiatier, Marina Bakarin, Adam Baldwin, and Alan Tudyk. Fun, fun, fun. All right. This is Liz's movie she had us watch. This yes. movie is, it, w it was uh, a labor of love for Joss Whedon because it came out with the, uh, I, I don't want to say highly acclaimed, but I had, a, I had a very strong cult following. The people who liked it were almost like the uh, Army of Dead strong fans. They just swore by it and Bring loved back it. back Firefly. And since and since they did, I think it's been twenty years now. So I don't know if if if, if, if they it was the it. very first is one of the very first movies to ever have the uh, audience bring it to life. You yes. know what I mean? Like that was one of the very first ones they ever did that where the, the audience. Why they did such... it is because he knew he couldn't do a TV show or continue, and he had to finish the story because he never got to finish the story. They didn't even. I, it didn't even. The TV show didn't even finish its complete season on on air. There was like two episodes, I think, that never aired. So when you buy the box set, you get to see the extra two episodes. That's rough. That's rough. And you know, it's 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 that that as a symptom is sad because there's a lot of uh, good stuff that comes out that I don't even try to watch anymore until I see a pickup for the second season because I'm not trying to get. You know, it's like going to a strip club you go there and you see boobies and then you go home and you don't get to touch them like <laughs> you go to strip clubs where you can touch them i want to go there they, they yeah. spray me they spray me with stuff and they say step back i said fuck all right all right yeah <laughs> like that oh my goodness now dude this movie was i was i remember we got midnight seeking theater tickets for this like this was this was the shit and I was so excited to like to see this finally. We watched the the seasons beforehand. I got my dad involved. Josh is even so involved. He's even has T shirts that have Jane's shirts. <laughs> so it was this this movie was great because it was a science. It combined two of my favorite genres, sci fi and westerns. I actually like a lot of westerns, and it this was just this is one of probably one of my favorite science fiction movies. At, well, TV shows of all time. It's right up there. Star Trek, Firefly, Stargate. <laughs> Those are like the trifecta for Liz. Did you watch all the Stargate? Yep. I watched uh, all of the movies and I watched all of the TV shows, all three of them, all seasons. I loved it. It was good. It was a yeah, I saw, I saw them all too. I saw them all too. You guys are more Stargate. hardcore than I am, man. Dude, I saw the movie and that was it. I was like, no, nope, I'm good, dude. The Stargate's cool, but. They don't have Kurt Russell in it. I ain't watching. Well, oh they, man! Yeah, but they just they swapped. Dude, Kurt MacGyver Russell. was a better Jack O'Neill than but Kurt Russell was. But we're talking Russell about was. the wrong thing here. That's for we'll watch Stargate for my next pick. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we do, I'll tell you my Stargate story. So you'll love that one. It's a good fuzzy story. It's a good. Well, what's cool one. about the Serenity and the Firefly universe is that it was the TV show, then they did the movie, and now it's continued into the comic book. So they've done. If that whole the, all the stories that are in the in the comic series, I think it was Dark Horse had it first, and then Boom Studios picked it up, and it's it takes place like right after well, the Boom stuff does takes place right after this movie, and you find out Wash and, and Zoe have a kid. She's pregnant when all this was going down, and they have a kid, and they got you know, there's it's just it's it's uh, it's continued on because and every time you go to a convention. No doubt you're going to see a brown coats table somewhere next to the. Did you read? Busters. Did you uh, read all the books? I did. Yeah, I, it's one of the few ones that I've collected. Did it in the conclude hardcover. satisfactorily? There, 
it's still going. So they still oh, have wow. it. Yeah. They still have it going. And they've done it now. We're like little mini series here and there. They'll do one shots for they did like a holiday one shot special and they're they're always adding to it. So and the person that was writing it wrote for the movie and the TV show. So it's the continuity's really good. They need to come out with an expansion for the game. For the from the movie. I always thought that Nathan Fillion should have played Drake in the Uncharted series, and I saw them do a uh, a fan movie of Nathan Fillion as Drake. It's pretty dope. I recommend people check it out because if you look at the character from Uncharted, it's freaking Nathan Fillion. Even the voice even sounds like him. Yeah, and his attitude. There's so many good one-liners in this movie. I forgot quoting all of them. It's, this was another one that has one of the best openings ever because you're yeah. like, you know, you think it's. I like to continue a shot. Track. Yeah, I like. Well, like, I like that they were able to hold that shot for a good while. That's I was well, this, that. And this is Whedon's space, first movie. It's quiet. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. They, but they, but tell me, I mean, literally, I'm telling you guys, like, if I had a book, like, if I wrote a book about Fuzzy's favorite like openings and like one liners. It's in Serenity, like in, yeah. in the top 10 easily. Just the way he was like, you told me the couplings were going to hold. Well, He's, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was that, like, six was months whole, ago. <laughs> yeah, wait, yeah, that was six months ago. And the other thing is like, um, oh, God, oh, God, we're going to die. That's how bad it is. <laughs> and he gets on the thing. He goes, all right, everybody, we're going to experience some turbulence and maybe explode. And then he hangs it up and then he goes walking yeah. through the tunnel. And Jane's like, wait, what? We're going to explode? I don't want to explode. <laughs> and then, yeah, they just keep going through the whole thing. That was so and good. That, and that's how you introduce people to characters. Like, I've always said that, like, you know, when you think back to all your favorite, like, uh, team up movies, you know what I mean? Let it be Fast and Furious, let it be, you know, whatever it is. You always introduce your characters that way. Like, something chaotic's going on, and everyone around them's kind of reacting in a weird way. But then you see them come, you know, band together to figure out how to fucking get out of it and stuff. And I was like, I'm all, this is just, per this is what you study if you want to write, like, that's how you introduce your characters. Like, that was really good. Like, and then the villain is one of the dopest fucking villains. Like, I don't know how people don't hold him up. Like, you, everyone in the nerd community is going to hate me for saying this, but Vader, our guy, like, he's he's there, dude. Like, this, he's he just doesn't have the mask. Like, when he's sitting there just reviewing the fucking footage, and then the guys come in, you know, and he just kind of, he, he's never mad. He doesn't fucking lose his cool. He just fucking kills everybody. <laughs> it's like, oh, I like this guy. Yeah, young he's Miss, Young shit. Miss, as he's holding <laughs> the knife for the guy and he's sliding down next to him. You're like, damn. Oh, man, I love All it. Right. Dude, that so awesome. The operative yeah, is the very, yeah. very uh, unassuming name there for sure. Yeah, he's he was he's he's an underrated villain like you when you hear people list villains to me he's one of the ones that always pops up in my head because i remember again i'd never seen firefly or anything like that so i went into this blindly and i was just like what the fuck is this space age movie you know i honestly thought it was going to be like the fifth element i was like oh this looks like the fifth element like cool i'm gonna go watch this <laughs> and i sat down and watched it for the first time i didn't even see it in the theater or no i did I saw it on accident in the theater because we used to get in the movie theaters for free on Thursday nights and they were putting it on. So we got to be the first people to see it and we watched it. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Dude, like I was laughing. People got up and walked out of the theater because they were like, oh, this is sci-fi. And I'm dying laughing. Like I could not stop laughing throughout the whole thing, dude. Like even down to where he's like, if the uh, when they're when they go to rob the bank or whatever and just the way the shit was going down with all the different, you know, fucking all hell's breaking loose. But the whole time he's busting, Nathan Fillion's busting jokes as he's saving people. He's got the six shooter and everyone's got fucking like badass guns, but he still just got the fucking six shooter and he's just shooting at him. I'm like, yes, dude, that's so badass. I love this, this movie. This is what science fiction, classic science fiction is. It's, it's, it's um, somewhat political or things that are going on in the world when it was coming out kind of and uh but couching it in like like the sci-fi like the science fiction kind of thing you know it's metropolis it's star trek it's all that stuff and he does it beautifully somebody who's never seen a tv show and being able to sit down and watch this movie 
you're all caught up with the characters and what they're doing just because we know, you know, being a fan of the TV show, it just, this just adds more to it. But going in blind, it's still a perfect movie kind of like just a sci-fi flick on its own, even if you didn't know anything about the team. And that's, that's also a, a good mark of a, of a science fiction yep. or a writing too, being able to catch everybody up on what's going on and go right into it. Sorry. You know, I like the movie. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Firefly. I've uh, watched everything. At least, I, I haven't read the comic books, but I've watched, you know, obviously, the movie and the entirety of the show. And I have the board game, which is an epic board game. Um, but I uh, I disagree that it's it's a perfect movie. And the reason is because... Um, You're an ass. No. <laughs> it is because uh, it feels like an extended episode of the TV show. It doesn't really feel like the movie itself. And that's fine. I mean, you know, the TV show was fantastic. So it, that's not really a detriment in that way. I just think that that um, the big screen, uh, th this movie doesn't do the big screen enough justice. And, and the beginning of the film where they're doing this one take where you're kind of getting introduced to all the characters, they almost react to each other in the sense like they don't know each other or even don't like each other which really is not how it comes across toward the end of the, the one season that they did. By that point, they're all, you know, fairly fast friends. They trust each other. And there's already this, you know, in the movie, there's this like conflict that seems out of place on the heels of what came before. And so I think that's kind of a weakness for the film. Um, but as far as everything else, I mean, this is, this, this mo movie showed you and the TV show as well, showed you what Joss Whedon was capable of, which is obviously why he got selected to do another ensemble film like The Avengers. Um, all the characters are fantastic. You know, you get invested in them. And especially if you've watched the show, you're already like hip deep in it anyway. And, uh, you know, extra bonus, uh, the brown coats are the Confederacy and they're the good guys. <laughs> The one I always use on my sister when she bothers me. You are seriously damaging my calm right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's got the, some of the best lines. And, and again, it's Whedon's first first outing as a director. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is his first movie he did. And you look at it and you go, fuck, I wish this was my first movie. Like, <laughs> I wish I could do something like that, dude. Like... I look at my first movie and I don't even want to show it to nobody. It's that bad, but this is fucking amazing, <laughs> dude. Like, this is awesome. So yeah, well, I, I did. Ten years old, we cannot watch it, right? Favorite, nope. favorite one liner. Uh, you mean sex? <laughs> you mean a gun? I don't want to die now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I mean, was they, good. They, they, I, the only thing I, I, I give it, I give boo remarks is they killed my boy too quick. Dude, oh, kill him. Gosh, they, that I, was <laughs> the theater when we saw that. We're like, all right, they made it. I'm a, you know, I'm a leaf on the wind. Watch me suck. Uh, and you're just like, <laughs> what the fuck just well, happened look, here? <laughs> look, that's that's something that we should have. Well, I mean, well, let, John, so yeah. later on we should have known what Joss Whedon was going to do because he killed Agent Coulson the same way, right? Mm -hmm. In a very shocking sort of way, you know, you think he's on top of things because he just blasted Loki through a wall, and you're like, "Oh, he's on it," and then shlink, dead. And I reacted the same exact fucking way yeah, as I so did with we. Coulson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That whole. Well, if they if they have another movie, then they need to have Tyler Labine come in place, come and replace Alan Tudyk. Are those rumors that they're going to try and... Um, you guys remember... Who, you guys know who Tyler Labine is? Re no. He was uh, he was Tucker. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Where was I the other day? Sorry. Segway, Tucker and Dale story. Is that we... I was... We were driving down the street and somebody said, you know, just like me, I bet you're wishing you can watch Tucker and Dale versus Evil. And I was like, I got to find that bumper sticker for Nate. Because... <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, you wish you were home, like, uh, yeah, something like that, watching Tucker Officer, and Officer, yeah, doozy of a day. <laughs> College kids are just killing themselves all over our property. 
cucked himself in a wood chipper. Oh, love that movie so much. Like all of the acting in this was good too. Like they just they did such a good job. And plus, I, I your... wish I wish Alan Tudyk's death would have been. Uh, it, it, I, I suppose that, that that was what he was going for, as you guys say. But, like, <sighs> exhale, we made it, yay, we're safe. <clears throat> yeah. Well, the thing is, is that if you watch the, again, I always go back to the TV show, because it's all connected. He's actually the, he's the heart of that ship. He's, like, the heart and soul of that. And when you watch the the episodes of, how the, the there's one where the crew initially comes together and how the fire how they buy the firefly or the serenity and they build it up and everything like that and how he and Zoe meet and stuff and he really is the he is the heart he is the heart and soul of that ship and then when you see that happen you're just like uh, 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 oh god I just died a little bit myself because it was just it's it's just it's so sad. So but that but that even shows how much good writing is again. I didn't see Firefly. I, I he's in it for that small amount of time, you know what I mean? And even when it happens, I went, Oh fuck, dude. Like cause you you sense that as weird as it sounds in that dialogue when they're entering the atmosphere. Yeah. The way he's talking to Nathan, because he is, he's he's the ob like, you know, he's trying to be nice, like, oh god, oh god, we're gonna die. Like that's what makes it so funny because he's saying it so sweetly, like, you know, so nice, and you're just like, okay, so he's the heart, you know what I mean? Like you said, you like you could point out when he's introducing these characters who do it. So to get me who's never seen Firefly, you know, when sitting down to watch this for the first time and make me fucking lose it, like, oh my god, they just killed this guy, like, oh my, how'd they get? Because it's the surprise. It's that fucking, oh, we're okay. You no, know, that that gets you. Yeah. Like, you want, like, Shepard dies, you know, on the planet. You know, Shepard, Shepard Book. He was originally on the ship with them in the TV show. And then there is there is a story that takes place between the TV show and the movie as well. To, like, fill in the gap why Inara left and why Book, you know, Shepard left, too. But like, um, you know, you're like, okay, well, Shepard, you know, if you know that character, that's the, that's, that's the one bad thing about this is that you don't get to know his character very well in the show, but he was very integral in the TV show. So that was, they did kind of him, they did him a little dirty on that, but like, you're like, oh, that's sad. He died, but they need the motivation to get him, to get them to go someplace else. But, um, like, shit, I don't remember where I was going with this. Damn it. You're. Don't let Wash die. <laughs> Damn it! Like any other character in that in that show could have died, and it would have been just fine. But you know, and you wouldn't. I don't think you would have the same reaction if they were to die as if when Wash does. You're just like, oh man, I want to get sad right now. <laughs> I'm gonna get a Jack Daniels from the uh, refrigerator. I'll be back. <laughs> Need a stiff drink. <laughs> All right. So as always. Our classic movies that we are reviewing are graded on the bucket system. Acting, directing, social relevance. Does it hold up? Does it not? Liz, your movie, your labor of love, what do you got for us? Um, I'm giving it a nine. It isn't a perfect movie, as Josh did say. There are some things in it, but it's... You know, I can't, I can't give it, I can't give it a perfect score, but it does have the relevance. I mean, you see it everywhere. People cosplay it all the time. They reference it in a bunch of TV shows and geeky up, you know, they even, he's in, even in a TV show now, Villian is called The Rookie and they've made little comments about his character in The Rookie. So it's, it's even crossed over into other things. Um, the acting was, is fantastic. The directing is fantastic. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's not, it's not, it's not a 10 for me. It's just, it's, it's almost there. I'd give it a 9.9. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, there's just that, that little something there. And I think it's, I think it's the, uh, this time around, it was because of the, the Shepherd book not giving a good character for him. You know, I don't know. Mr. Scott. Well, uh, you know, being a fan of Firefly, obviously, it makes me biased toward the film. You know, I have a lot of love for the characters and the story. And and I think that, the, you know, there's 
you can't fault the plot or anything else like that. I think the only fault with the film really is that you're trying to jump in normies who have no experience with the series when really, you know, with an ensemble cast like that, it depends on previous work. You wouldn't expect to walk into the Avengers film without having seen, you know, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, and the Hulk in their own feature films before you got there so that you understood the context of what was going on. Now, maybe you can watch it, but you're going to be missing so much of the richness and the depth with which the characters were built. Um, there's a lot that will be missing. So, and I think that that's the same thing that's going on here. And because, of course, the TV show was so short-lived, it was hard to come by. A lot of regular folks, I don't think, really got an opportunity. And I, if I recall correctly, this film was considered a flop at the box office because of the fact that it just didn't make back what they expected it to. So, which is a shame. But given given that particular shortcoming, which is not really its fault, you know, the directing is great, the story is great, the, the special effects, you know, no offense to our Indian friends, but it beats that out by a long shot. Um, <laughs> and uh, it does have a lot of cultural relevance, uh, but I, I can't go all the way for a 10 because of that one particular flaw. So I'm going to also give it a nine. He said it better as to why it's a nine for me. <laughs> he said ditto. Right. <laughs> Next time you go first. <laughs> Fair enough. Fuzzy, you're going to caboose it again? Yeah, I'll caboose it. Because you know I'm going to get what I'm going to do, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't get your rating, Nate. Yeah. yeah. No, I was seeing if you wanted to go or not before I went. Oh, I see. Um, I, 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 I never watched the show. <clears throat> I liked the movie more than I thought I was going to because I fell asleep on it the first time. I was actually fairly entertained with it, but it didn't feel like a movie to me. Mm -hmm. It felt like I was watching a TV show. Yeah. Um, the it seems like they put a little bit more into the space flight than a TV show had, and those scenes. But the uh, being pinned down with the reaver shooting, it, there was a there was a lack of of, of grandioseness that I that I that I that I felt. Coming from a, a sci-fi movie now with a budget of thirty million in two thousand five, they did really well mm -hmm. with with what they had, but it still didn't cross over into the in, into any kind of epic sci-fi ness for me. And because I didn't have any preconceived, uh, I, I I didn't go into it with any knowledge or love of the characters or anything like that. You know, I thought it was okay. I didn't understand that Alan Tudyk's death wasn't meant to be weirdly uneventful or like ironic or, or, or however that was. So this one, this one's a six for me. Oh man. Well, let me save this movie because let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is, I agree with the Scots. It is a nine in my book. It's got all the fun things. I, Nate, you're right. You know, it did kind of feel like a, a TV show. I feel you on that. But the 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 fun in this one is is just not unstoppable. You know what I mean? And Nathan Fillion has a big part to do with it. You know what it's I mean? The name. It, 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 it's the name. It's 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 just the fun of like he is he is again another one of those actors where you're just like fuck. I'll see anything the guy's in. You know what I mean? Sign me up. Like you know it's going to be a good. You know he's going to play a good part in it. So I'm in and like. The, again, the villain is one of my favorite villains of all time. Like, just legit. Like, that's I, even before we reviewed it again. I've said it before years ago. Like, when people would be like, "Who's your favorite villain?" I'd always bring him up because I'm like, he is badass. Like, he's legit one of the most badass guys I've seen. So I'm gonna give it a nine. But then with my fuzzy extra points, with the great one-liners, great opening, great fucking villain, it's going up to a twenty-six point seven. Okay, so 26.7 is where I put this one at because of all that. Stuff. Ah! Look at that. It's that big. It knocked their camera down. That's how good. That's how powerful that number was, ladies and gentlemen. I blew them right out of the water, dude. That's how I do it, dude. So, you know, if Fuzzy gives it a 26, you got to check it out, dude. That's all I'm saying. Am I wrong? Is it me next week? I think it is you. It's my movie next week. All right. No we have to, we got, we'll, we'll have something great for everyone. No I'm sure everybody will love it. What's that? No swords and sandals. No, no, no swords and sandals. Please. No swords and sandals. No swords and sandals. I'm, I'm thinking new wave. 
<laughs> oh, like new that. wave. New so, wave. Uh, new waves coming next week. Fuzzy, you know what to Late. do. Take us out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching us. And ladies and gentlemen, have some, have some love, some peace, and that Popeye's grease. Ladies and gents, we out. Peace.